Hello everybody, Joda Lawyer here, and thanks for watching. Hey guys, so recently I released a big video. It was pretty big, like three and a half hours, and it was my deep dive into all aspects of the OSR, like every aspect of it, every bit, little part of it. And uh, it's gotten a great reception, but I, I realized that, you know, three and a half hours is pretty big for most people to sit there, even though it's broken up into chapters. So I had an idea, you know, maybe I'll just put this out in pieces. You know, that each each main part has a separate piece. And that way people can sort of digest it at their own pace. I don't have to worry about listening to a big, a big long video, essentially. Um, and by listen, I mean because I just talk and show these cool black and white art pictures from old school D&D. So I don't have to watch or anything. But I thought it might be a good idea because there's a lot of people recently who got into the OSR or were looking to get into the OSR. And they came from a 5e experience, and maybe they watched some YouTubers like, you know, Matt Mercer, Matt Colville, GDD, and, they, you know, they, and that's that's their experience. And they're, they're hearing about this OSR thing from the sidelines, and they're like, what is it? I want, I want to check it out. And so, basically, I figured, let me do this big video, and now I'm breaking it up into pieces for you. So, um... You're going to hear a lot of references to things, you know, boards or blogs or links to this or that, and uh, and maybe references to you know products. I'm not. I have a link page for everything I talk about, so you guys don't have to take notes at all or anything like that. All right. So just click, there's a the link page is included in the description here, as well as a link to the big big video if you want to just listen to this thing all the way through. I'm dropping it in like 13 chunks, I think it'll be. So you know, feel free to take a look at that. And one really important thing, guys, is I got a little contest going with Eric Tankar. Whoever uh, Whoever gets the five thousand subs first, um, the other guy, the uh, the other guys got to buy a steak dinner and donate a hundred bucks to their favorite charity. So I definitely want to win a steak dinner because I'm doing the Atkins diet. Damn it, and I. <laughs> <laughs> like steak so <laughs> anyway guys if you could uh, like and subscribe and share it around um i really really appreciate it that would that would go a long way toward helping me beat them i would really really appreciate that so without further ado um enjoy the video guys all right guys so blogs now this is a big one um big because personally for me that's that's where i got involved in the OSR, really, but it wasn't called that. We didn't have a freaking name for it, like I said, but it's where I started really getting into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I started my blog in like 08, I believe it was. And a lot of us, did. I think Tim Shorts, Gothridge Manor, um, uh, Eric Tankar, we all started within like a month or two of each other. Everybody just jumped into the blog bandwagon. We pretty much all use Blogger. Some people use WordPress and some other weird ass ones, but most everybody was on Blogger. The benefit of Blogger was that everybody pretty much on the right-hand side or left-hand side of their blog had what they call a blog roll. And the blog roll was a list of all the blogs that you also follow because you could like follow a blog, right? And it showed all the ones you follow and they were listed in order of most recent posts. So if you're reading my blog, you could see on the right that Eric just dropped the blog on Tankar's Tavern. That's where he got, by the way, the name of his channel and everything else here. It was the name of his blog. So you could see that <clears throat> Eric's Tinkard Tavern blog, he just dropped a post on whatever. And so as you're reading the thing on mine, you could see what he posted on his. Um, you know, just click the link there. And we all cross-referenced each other. So it was a little bit of a, an incestuous thing, but it really, really helped us because we were able to see what was going on at a glance everywhere. If you were on Blogger, it was fantastic because you saw everybody. There was, there was a couple hundred of us, you know, and we're like the hardcore of it. Um, I think, and it, it was it was a fun place because you could make you know comments on other people's blogs about whatever, and then you know you did your comment, and then sort of you read other people's comments, and then you you would get some more ideas, and then maybe you would be inspired to do a blog post of your own on a topic and reply to so and so's thing. Here's what I think, you know, as a, a more of an expansion of your comments, basically, and it was so cool because then somebody would do a comment on that on that blog post and. The whole thing grew. It was like a huge discussion forum limited to a, to a, a few hundred of us. Um, everybody who's in the OSR is still, are still kicking today, you know, started there, I think, for the most, or were participated in that. Nobody who really could claim to be an OSR guy from back in the day didn't have a blog or at least post over on these boards, right? It, it, that, that was sort of the signature. If you had a blog, if you're on the boards, you contributed back in the day, yeah, you were part of the OSR, you know, the founder members, whatever you want to call it, right? So... Um, my blog was called Wondrous Imaginings. I took it down a um, long time ago, just less bullshit. And a lot of people sadly did uh, because they, I don't know, for whatever reason, they just didn't want that shit out there anymore or didn't participate and didn't want to be bothered with messages of new, you know, in your email of, you know, new people posted a comment on the blog you wrote 12 years ago, right? It, it didn't, it didn't happen anymore. So plus with the move to Google plus, so they sort of like died out a little bit more on that later. But like I said, mine was wondrous imaginings. Now 
uh, in my list there, my links and all that, I gave you a bunch of different blogs, and I'll I'll touch base on some of them, and you know what they were all about. Now, uh, Gragnardia, uh, you know, we had our disagreements, me and him, but his was truly the biggest and best probably blog of the OSR. Um, but you thought about him, different story, whatever. He's nice enough guy, I guess. But yeah, you know. Um, but anyway, he had a he had a really good blog, deep insights. He took a like a professorial view of things. It was more an academic. Uh, an academic kind of a guy, you know, he, he, I don't know if he was in real life, but he looked at it in that way. He did deep dives and dissected a lot of things. He, his brain works very differently than mine. Um, uh, so he, he, uh, he, he was a good blog. He talked about a lot of things and his blog sparked so many conversations, you know, it, it really was, a you know, the, 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 the the, the inspiration for many, many of us to keep going and to expand our thoughts about certain things, right? Another blog, Tankar's Tavern, like I mentioned before, Eric still has his going. And uh, his uh, went from topics to his more of a news thing now. And if you want to know what's going on in the OSR and anywhere in any aspect, shape, any way, shape, or form, go to tankarstavern.com. It's no longer a blog spot thing. It's tankarstavern.com and check it out. Link is in there. Um, Tim Shorts, a Gothridge Manor, who I play with, and you'll see on our Friday night shows, um, his, his, uh, his, his, his uh, his blog is there still. He still posts to it sometimes. Rob Connolly, Bat in the Attic, he, again another Friday night guy. He's there. Um, if you're if you're watching my our Shadow Dark game on Mondays, you're gonna see a Rusty Battleaxe. That's Ken. He had a blog back in the day, which is the funny thing was that I didn't realize that Ken had a fucking. I knew of Rusty Battleaxe, and I I know Ken. I didn't know we were the same person until a few weeks ago. <laughs> That's how weird it was because you weren't seeing people. You were just typing, and people went by nicknames like me, Joe Lawyer. I got the Joe Lawyer name because back then I was listening to a lot of Howard Stern. Everybody on Howard Stern was, you know, Sal the Stockbroker and, you know, what whatnot, right? So I just said, oh, I got to make a name if I'm going to be out there, and I don't want to give my real name, blah, blah, blah. So I went Joe the Lawyer based on fucking Sal the Stockbroker. So that's where it came from. But, you know, Rusty Battleaxe, he was, we communicated, we talked, we discussed things. I'm sure. I don't remember every discussion, obviously, back then, 15 years ago, but and now I know that was Ken. So there you go. All right. Now, Vance has a blog. He's still doing it. Um, and now, Vance, son of a bitch, why do you write a blog name with an, that I could understand and pronounce? It's, it's spelled L E I C E S T E R apostrophe S ramble, right? Le Lechester's, Leicester's, who the hell knows, man? But make a blog you can fucking pronounce on my YouTube show, dude. But the link is in there too. Um, and believe it or not, I just found out that Mac Jackson has a blog, all right? So M S J X. Dot org. He has a blog out there. So who knew? Who knew? Um, anyway, those are the guys who are like my buddies we still play with and are friends. They all have these blogs, right? But a couple of the bigger ones that were going back then that were really influential was uh, one was the Alexandrian. He took a really good deep dive into a lot of mechanics and he came up with the, the Jay Quain the Dungeon, which, you know, I think kind of a douchey move. He later renamed more recently because he published a book, uh, had a dungeon master and whatnot. He called it, uh, I don't know, whatever. He changed the name from J. Quang the Dungeon to something that more Zandrying the Dungeon based on his blog name. Come on, dude. Really? Anyway, um, Courtney Campbell got into blogging a little later than all of us, but he contributed a lot. I think he was the guy who coined the phrase the quantum ogre. Like the ogre is going to appear wherever you are when it's needed. <laughs> you know, that sort of that sort of a thing. So he had a hack and slash master. Um, now, a couple of the big ones here. Uh, Jeff's game blog, Jeff Rents. If you if you have in your game <clears throat> a carousing table. I, I believe, uh, don't correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, anybody who's listening to this, Jeff Rents created the entire concept of a carousing table. If not, he made it popular. Everybody was carousing back in the day because of Jeff Rents. Um, a lot of deep in insights about the game. I played in a few of his games back in the day online. Really fun, really great DM. A little, a little uh, his style is more little gonzo than I am. Um, but fun, great DM, good time, good guy. All right, and now... Uh, he who should not be named, Zach Smith, D&D uh, &D with porn stars. A lot of drama came about with him, but I got to say, he did have and still does have a damn good blog. Talks about a lot of game-related stuff. He is a brilliant dude, whatever else you think about him. Brilliant dude, and um, you will learn a lot. Uh, a lot of insights if you read his blog, especially let, go back to the older posts. He was involved in everything after a certain point. You know what I mean? I think he started 09 or 10 maybe. But yeah, he was always there talking about a lot of stuff. And he drove a lot of the discussion too. He was like, there was a few people in the blog days who drove discussion. Gragnardia, um, Jeff Rents, Zach Smith, uh, they and Raji. Those were the four big ones, right? They drove a lot of the discussion, I think. Um, 
A couple other blogs. Matt Finch had a blog for Swords and Wizardry. Um, Hill Canton's blog was a great one. Um, Raji's blog, again, you cannot, you saw these essays that I talked about before, they were all on Raji's blog, right? So they're still up there. LOTFP to Blogspot, right? And then, uh, and then a Paladin and Citadel. So click on those. Now, the good thing, like I said about these blogs, is that once you click on one, any of them, right? The ones that are still up, and I think, I believe, all of these are still up. I clicked on them. Uh, they may not be updating, you know, recently, but a lot of them still are, surprisingly. They're still going strong. And on the right-hand side, they still have the blog roll. So you could click on these other blogs in the blog roll and see what else people are talking about. Maybe make a blog of your own, participate. I think all you need is a Gmail address to do it, right? Um, so, yeah, that was pretty cool. So I promised you a little story about 2,000 coppers. Have you ever heard that old story? Basically... Uh, James Malazuski of Grognardia, he was making a, a mega dungeon called Dwimmer Mount, right? And uh, he was he put out a rough draft of it. And this is early in the early days when I started playing D and D online with Eric Tankar. Uh, he was running it, and I was there. Greg Christopher was there. A few other people were playing that night, and uh, we said, let's just you know run run Dwimmer Mount for us in the run it as written. Don't modify it. Don't fuck with it. Don't do anything special. Just, you know, because every DM always takes something and messes with it and makes it their own, right? So just, let's just run it as written so we could just see, you know, what the hell's going on. Let's just play the game as written so we could really give it a, you know, give the tires a kick here and see how it runs. And so we did, and it sucked. I mean, it was just, there was, it was, I, I don't know, maybe because it was in unpolished form or whatever, but it was terrible, and I wrote a blog post. I remember the next day, hung over as shit. I got up, I had one eye open, and I had to walk the dog, and I had to take a leak, and I, and I remember I, I sat down at the computer, and I just hammered out a blog post based on the game the night before, and it was about 2,000 coppers because, infamously, there was a room full of rats, and you killed the rats, and they had exactly 2,000 coppers. No more, no less. Exactly 2,000 coppers. And I said, that just summarizes the whole spirit of the game of why it sucked ass. <laughs> you know, it didn't make any sense. At one point, Greg Christopher's guy just suicided himself into the... He just charged mindlessly and brainlessly into, like, this pack of people because it just... It sucked so bad. He wanted to end it so badly <laughs> that he just, he just kamikaze himself into, like, into the bad guys. And that was pretty much how we ended the night. And the shit blew up. And I think, you know, it hurt Malazuski's feelings. He went into depression. I think he had some shit going on in personal life, whatever. And he just, he just, he just dropped from the scene for a long time. So, uh, you know, that was a 2000 coppers drama. But anyway, in case you hear about it later, that's what happened. Uh, from a horse's mouth or a jackass's mouth, one or the other. Um, but anyway, he was a great contributor. And I'll take nothing away from him uh, uh, about what he did back in the days with the blogs. And he's still going, I think. He's just, you know, recently, years a few couple of years ago, he started reopening his blog and started posting again. So, you know, you go check it out, guys. All right? So that's how it went with the blogs. Uh, it, they're still a great resource. And the cool thing is that on the right-hand side of most blogs, we all did a... Uh, uh, history like you know what blog what what posts we did in january of 2025 or january 2000 and 2015 or whatever they're all there click on january 2015 and you'll see the five posts that so and so did and you can read them all and the cool thing is that if you cross reference other posts from other blogs of the same month and year you will be able to see what everybody was talking about at the time right so click on five blogs go to june of 2010 and see what people were talking about generally speaking we're all talking about the same shit so if you do that sort of thing you'll be able to see in real time really uh, uh, like a time capsule of the development of a lot of the thought that went into the osr and a lot of games that you see today so so that was a bit about the blogs all right so that's that's their their purpose their foundation what they did for us back in the day all right and then what happened after that was google plus um everybody <coughs> google owned the blogs they own Blogspot, blogger rather and so they decided we're going to make our own social media platform to compete with Facebook because Facebook was kicking her ass. I, think, I don't know, 2015? I'm not sure. Uh, later. But Facebook's kicking her ass and they wanted their own Facebook, basically. So they came up with something called Google+. Plus. The Google+, Plus lended itself really, really well to... Um, face-to-face -face gaming you could list in your groups on google plus who you wanted to follow and this and that and then you could set up a communities and you could share your groups of who you follow and you could just share the entire group and then boom i could follow everybody that eric's following and tim's following and vice versa and so it was really a cool thing and so it was uh you know it was a bigger broader group because by then the osr is pretty you know growing pretty big but really the best thing about google plus is you could jump 
you could just join a you you could basically set up something called a hangout, a Google Plus hangout, and invite people to the hangout, and you could just live chat with each other, right? Um, all video call, video conferencing, which was kind of neat. And I think the first person to do this was probably Zach Smith. And uh, I remember Tab Tavis Allison was one of the first guys. I think Zach says, "Hey, maybe we could run a game live using Google Hangouts, like fucking two a.m. or something." He decides to do a Google Hangout game, and I think he might have used Roll Twenty or some other thing, or maybe it's theater of mind, but he ran a D and D game. And all of a sudden, it was like a light bulb goes off in everybody's head. It's like, holy crap, <clears throat> I could play D&D with everybody I've been talking to for the last X amount of years, five, ten years, whatever, right? I could finally play D&D with them. And so, bam, Google Plus hit the map hard. Um, it was awesome. We were having a great fucking time. We were playing D&D with everybody. I, I got to play in so many games on Google Plus with people I really admired. And I got to see so many different ways of DMing. I got to see so many ways of, of playing as a character. Uh, I was pretty rigid, you know what I mean? My interpretation, I got to basically learn how to, you know, be more freewheeling and, and loose and, and whatnot and uh, not be so by the book. And Especially we had something called flail snails back in the day. You'll you can do a Google search on that. But basically what it was was <clears throat> if you had a character that you created, a D D first edition, my guy was named Sir Sir the Fist of Uther. And you know, you had a character and you could take that character, just like in the old days of uh, you know, Gary's Dungeons and Dragons, old days, you could take that character and run him in different people's games. Certain rules around it, you know what I mean? If you're in one game, you couldn't be in two games at the same time, whatever. But yeah, yeah. So if you're doing a five session dungeon delve in one guy's game, you couldn't be at simultaneously in somebody else's game. So yeah, there's some rules about that, but the cool thing was that Sir the Fist got to adventure in like, God, dozens of different people's games from gonzo to fantasy to sci-fi to everything. You know, he ended up with a shotgun, a laser cannon. <laughs> it was insane. It was fucking insane. We had so much fun, though. We had so much fun just, just learning how to play something different, you know, and I, I look at that as boot camp. It was like D&D fucking boot camp because it was like going to a convention for a couple of years. Right, you're you're playing at a convention for a couple of years straight. Every goddamn weekend, you're at this convention and you're playing in other people's games, and you're playing with other people side by side. And next week, you might be playing in their game. Now you're playing next to them as a player with your character. Right, so it was a goddamn good time. Um, it was a special time, really. It was. Uh, unfortunately, Google Plus evolved like all social media does into yelling and screaming at each other and blah blah blah. And the spirit was lost of the early days, and it became a a sad place, you know. And so that went away. Now, the sad part about Google Plus going away was that fucking Google just deleted it. So much development of the OSR was on Google Plus, you know, because it was linked to the blogs, but a lot of discussion happened in the Google Plus messages. You know, you'd post something on Google Plus, it would simultaneously be in your blog or vice versa, but your messages no longer happened on the blogs. They happened in Google Plus. And so just like on a Facebook message, you know, you, you post a comment to a Facebook thing and, you know, you're only seeing it there. So imagine if somebody just closed down Facebook, all the conversations and all the discussions you've ever had are gone. They're just completely fucking gone. And that's what happened. Google Plus is gone and there's years of OSR development and thought and playing games that went into that that we'll never get back. You'll never see it again. It's a goddamn shame, honestly. Um, but again, like I said, it kind of had to go because it was getting so toxic anyway. After that, people went different places. This is sort of like the, uh, <clears throat> the what is it, the diaspora, the, the scattering, you know, uh, if you want to get into Dune, right, where everybody, the great scattering, the great disbursement of everybody into out into the world. And people went various places. People went to, uh, some people stayed on board, some people kept the blogs going, but not it was never the same as it was. Some people went to Discord, went to YouTube, went to podcasts. Um, the community grew into a certain point and then it gave birth to itself. I don't know what you want to call it, right? And then it scattered. And right now, that's kind why there's no organized OSR. I guess really is another Dune analogy. You can never contain, corral, or organize the OSR. Just like, you know, uh, <laughs> say, that's like Leto did. You know, he, he, he strained them so long until they had to give birth. And then they scattered out into the cosmos. That's what happened to the OSR. That's why people try to control it, contain it, define it. You never will. It's gone. It's scattered. It's, it's, it's a bunch of theories and thoughts that have later been seeded into various things. Just like, just like Dune. Just like the scattering in Dune. So... Yeah, so that was it. That's that's that was the the blogs and the Google Plus days. Like a little good overview there for you guys. So, hope you enjoyed that. Next, we're going to get into the OSR games themselves, the retro clones and other games that were based on it. Okay, so enjoy. We'll see you in a sec. <laughs> 